Welcome back to Sharks Happen. My name is Hal. I'm your host, going over shark attacks from the 1900s, still present. Mostly large sharks, and we're going to get started over in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And the date is April 7, 2020. Stacia Rose Davis, her and her husband go out to do some surfing in the morning, and it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. She, Stacy is sitting upright on her board. She's about 60 yards from shore and about 10 to 12 feet of water. Her husband's about uh, 10, 15 feet away from her and a uh, dolphin breaches and she says she figures she knew that there were fish in the area. Well, she gets hit hard. Um, she gets bit in the left foot. She looks down and she's got a shark bite in her foot. She kicks and the shark lets go. It breaches and then it swims off and Stacy and her husband paddle their way in. Uh, her husband applies pressure to the wound while there's call for help. She gets in. She had a severed artery in her left foot and also a severed nerve and it took over 100 stitches to be able to repair that and hopefully she'll get back to uh, 100%. Um, you know, I had smashed this finger, my pinky finger. I had completely smashed it in tool and die, and that was like eight years ago. I still have pain in it when I bend strings and stuff, so it never went back to normal. It was a pretty bad, you know, it had the blood shooting out the sides and it smushed the finger and it broke the nail, and I could see in some, there's nothing in there. You can see inside your finger, and it's just like red, the red outline of your the inside of the finger. It's not like anything in there. And, uh, but it never went back to normal and it's still numb when I touched the end. So nerves were severed from it and it doesn't feel the same. It feels numb on the tip of my finger all the time. And then when I play guitar, it hurts. So, uh, hopefully she, that nerve will, uh, re be repaired and she'll get back to hundred percent and be able to walk with no problem. Uh, you know, that's just a little pinky that I had hurt. I can't imagine a foot, you know, that's got to be awfully painful. Plus you have to put all your weight on that. Um, I know a lot of people that, you know, tennis injuries that have recurring problems with their feet. And I hope that's not the case for Stacy. Uh, that's her story and attack. It sounds just like, you know, this, uh, sounds like that. We went over a spear fisherman that was out, uh, quite a ways from his buddies in the boat and a bull shark came up and bit him in the hand and just went off when they bite you in the hand or the foot like that. And they're smaller like that. I'm almost positive it's, mis it's actually mistaken identity and they think that, that what they see is a flash of a fish when it's ac actually probably the flash of the bottom of a foot. Um, something that's offset from whatever you're wearing that has contrast and they might think it's a fish out there and go ahead and bite at it. Sounds like that's what happened to Stacy. We'll put it down as an attack uh, and that's it. Okay, we're going to stay in Cocoa Beach, Florida. The date, May 26th. Uh, 2018, Cody High, 15 years old, is out playing with his nieces and nephews in knee deep water. Uh, they get done playing and they decide to start walking in. They just start walking in and Cody is bitten in the leg. He said it felt like uh, a person grabbing onto his leg and squeezing it as hard as they could. At first, he thought it was one of his cousins or something. And you know, then he saw the blood in the water. Uh, he was assisted to the beach. He got in and got sewn up. The doctor said that it was too many stitches to count. Um, no, no mention of nerve damage. Um, I'm going to post a, a an actual link to this. They went ahead and sewed him up, so we're going to put that down as an attack, not an attempt to predate. I'll put a link to this because you can see. Um, the diameter, the, I guess, the full arc of the of the mouth. I think. And I don't know that that's a six foot shark. I mean, it looks more like maybe a four and a half foot shark. Because if you look at the doctor's hand next to the wound, it don't look any wider than, than his hand. I can't imagine a six foot shark having that skinny of a mouth. Um, so take a look at the photo, see what you think. Um, it goes around his knee, I do believe. It involved the knee, but uh, you know, I, it, it reminds me of, uh, I'll post a link to this too. Um, a crazy story a viewer had sent me. Uh, a while back about a uh, muskie that it tried to drag a woman off into deeper waters in an Ontario river. Um, it grabbed her by the leg and the wound on her leg looked similar to the bite mark on this guy. So uh, I'll post both of those and you can take a look at both of those and that story about the muskie is just in, in, insane. You, you'll enjoy that. Okay, now we're going to head over to Perth Beach, which is in Australia. Uh, the date is November of 2021. Uh, this is that supposed double shark attack that I was saying no information had gotten out about. I finally went ahead and went over this one as it came up in the stack. And uh, it's a crazy attack. Uh, Paul Millichip, he's 57 years old, and he's out taking a swim. He gets about 50 meters from shore at 10 o'clock in the morning. And witnesses saw him 
just disappear under the water. The shark grabbed him, obviously, but dragged him under. Uh, as soon as this happened, there were teenagers on the shore that jumped into, it sounds like, two dinghies, two metal dinghies. One of them went up and down the beach telling people to get out of the water. The other dinghy with a couple of kids in it, they went over uh, with the dinghy and went to the aid of the man. So they went to his aid. Um, they tried to keep the shark from Paul by going ahead and trying to circle around the victim, but it didn't work and the shark took the victim and disappeared. Um, I'm not sure on, on if either of the boys had to be treated for shock. This was the one that I thought might be the two double shark attack. Uh, people were saying a large great white and a large tiger shark had attacked him. Um, I was waiting for these two kids to be able to say what they had seen because usually two sharks turn out to be one and it sounds like that's what happened here. Uh, they're saying a 14 foot great white, some are saying 15 foot, but well, you know. It's going to swallow you nonetheless. They, they looked for 48 hours, didn't find a, a single thing of him, not even a piece of lung like they find on some of these shark attacks. So my guess is it took him under and swallowed him whole and took him away. Um, you know, that's why when people say how big are a shark, it's hard to tell how big of a shark on length by their girth unless it's got that overly jowly looking neck to where it look, just looks thick the whole length from the dorsal all the way to their head, that's a 20 footer plus probably, you know, that's like deep blue. Those things just look different than, than any other shark, but a shark hits 13 feet. It could be big and fat like 16 footers, so it's really hard to judge that way. And uh, they can have really big mouths and everything, even if they're just 13 feet, I think they could swallow us with no problem. I think that's what happened to Paul Millichip. Uh, we're putting this down as an attack and a predation. Okay, now we're going to head over to the northernmost of the Ionian Islands, which is Corfu. We're going to the royal residence at Corfu. Uh, this is Greece, I do believe. The date is August 17, 1951. Uh, Vandi Pieri, uh, she was swimming with, I think it's her fiancé. He's 18-year-old. His name is George. And it's about noon. They're about 150 yards from shore. It's a busy Busy day, it sounds like there's other swimmers in the water. And George is sitting there when he suddenly sees what he thinks is a huge shark. Um, Vondi didn't see it, but she did see his face. And she asked him what was wrong because he looked like he saw a ghost. And he said, nothing, I just saw a dolphin. He didn't want to scare her. Well, after this, the shark had passed up two other swimmers and surfaced about 20 feet behind Vondi. And it just sat there paused, uh, probably just like we see in all these videos from the drones where the shark's just sitting there kind of looking. And then it took off on a vicious attack. The shark had hit her, grabbed her from her head down, and bit her off and ate her from all the way up to her hips. So the first bite, all that was left of her were her legs. It took everything else and swallowed it. And instead of going after her, it turned its attention now to George. Uh, George was right by her. It turned and it came at him, even bumped him. Uh, he had hit it and kicked it. So people had showed up now, took him up out of the water. And as he was being taken out of the water onto a boat, the shark went back and took Vondi and disappeared with the remains. Uh, nothing was ever seen of her again. Um, we're going to put that down as an attack and an attempt to predate um, what it did to George. It seems it was territorial, didn't want him in its area when it was feeding, is what I'm thinking. I don't think that, you know, this is a 20-foot great white shark. I don't think that hitting it is going to matter or kicking it doesn't matter. It just wanted to make sure that he wasn't in the area uh, disturbing his meal, uh, which sadly was the 16-year-old Bondi. We're going to put it down as an attack and a predation. Okay, now we're going to finish out our unprovoked attacks over off the coast of Japan, off western Japan. Uh, the date is about 3,000 years ago. They got like from 1370 to 1010, I believe it is, sometime in between that 200-year period. Uh, there's an archaeological site called Sukumo. Uh, and Sukumo number 24, I believe that would be the 24th body that was recovered, the 24th human that they recovered out of this uh, archaeological site that they're digging up. Uh, they had dug up more than 170 humans, but Sukumo, Sukumo number 24 
uh, he had a rough go of it. When they dug up his bones, uh, they, they realized that most of his bones had massive injuries to them, all of them, almost all of his bones. They found 790 scrapes, cuts, gouges, uh, cross hair type uh, scrapes on the bones, fractures, other things made by a V-shaped, so by teeth. Uh, it seems that he went out there and they think he was attacked when he was alive and a lot of the damage is to his left hip, his left leg, and his pelvis. So he also lost his left hand. They think that he was bit in the left hip first and went down to hit the shark and lost his hand in the process. Uh, he also had his right leg was gone. It was not even buried with him. His left hand was not buried with him, so he lost both of those. Um, the right, the, the left leg, he was missing the right leg, the left leg that was there, they had buried that upside down. I think to let people know if they went ahead and un, unburied this at, at one point, that that leg was not the way that it should be. They probably found the leg floating and they put it in there backwards. I'm thinking on purpose, uh, for whatever reason, but maybe to let people know if they ever dug it up that something had happened to this guy that you know, wasn't normal for their town. Uh, they said that they found, like I said, over 790 scrapes. There were, there were fractures to all the ribs. Um, they said that it was probable that, that they went ahead and ate the chest and the, and the stomach. The whole thing is, is they called this thing a uh, single shark. And, you know, this is one shark that went ahead and did this one. I find that hard to believe. Uh, they talked about sharks that would be there at the time, tigers and, and great whites. If it was a great white, maybe it was just that shark, but I'm doubting that was a great white because they take their bites and chunks and swallow them. And they're not going to skeletonize. You know, a shark's not going to sit there and pick the meat. A great white isn't going to pick the meat off a bone. So I don't know where they're getting this, that it was just one shark. Um, I'm thinking that, it, you know, if it was a white shark, the thing probably attacked him first. And then it was, they said that there was evidence that the body was in the water quite a while. So other sharks had a way at this. And if it was a tiger shark that did it, I would think it would have taken a leg and left it for other sharks. I think this, this skeletonizing was done by smaller sharks. You know, it could have been anything, lemons in, involved, uh, little, little, what are those called? Uh, bonnet heads, small hammer heads, uh, uh, blue sharks. Could have been all kinds of things eaten on this thing, but uh, I, I highly doubt that it was all done by a single shark. So again, with the experts, I'm gonna take the field and go with it, just like I did with Megalodon, where they say it looks like Megalodon. Well, I don't think it does. Um, too big of a shark to be able to have a great white body. In my opinion, I would think the body's more like a Megamouth or our buddy, the basking shark, where, you know, it's got the skinny jeans from the way down there. They're not going to have that much weight like a great white. A great white being that big, I can't see that thing being able to swim, let alone be able to feed itself and sustain itself, even with all the big creatures that are in the water. Uh, so that's our story of Sukumo number 24 over in Japan, the oldest shark attack known. Okay, we're going to finish out our show with what were you thinking? Uh, we're going to head over to Oahu, Hawaii back in September of 1917 for this one. Carl Naquina, he is doing some fishing and he catches himself a shark and it's a 12-foot shark. He battles with this thing for who knows how long to get it into the shallows and he shoots it in the head. Now, the shark turns belly up and you got yourself a dead shark. So he gets a couple of friends. I think they're friends of him. I don't know who else can help put a shark do what they're going to do. But uh, he has a couple friends help him, so they grab this shark and they move it obviously up onto the beach and up by his car, I would think, or they drove his car down on the beach, one of the two. But they're going to put this 12-foot shark into this car to take it to Honolulu to prove the, what great fishermen they are. So they're putting this shark into the back of this 1979, uh, 1917 tonneau. Um, old style car, you know, at the top that goes down, and you can put a shark in the back of that if you want. I guess. <laughs> they take and uh, they take the shark, and two of the men are in the back and they're pushing. Carl climbs into the car and he's pulling, and the shark is almost in when it opens its mouth and grabs onto his arm and bites down. <laughs> the shark, 
obviously was not dead. I've heard of sharks, you know, being dead and they'll close their mouth, but they ain't going to open their mouth and shut it unless they're still alive. So these three morons, Larry, Curly, and Mo, trying to put this shark inside of a car in 1917, end up with their buddy Carl getting bit in the arm with severe lacerations, and he needs to go in and get fixed up. So uh, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope if you catch a shark, you don't try to put it just put it in your car and take it away. At least make sure it's dead if you're going to do so. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back in a couple more days with another show of attacks. But if you go into that water, remember, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you. <laughs>